What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, nail biter, wasn't it? Yeah, those games are um, they're tough, but they're also exciting. And um, man, I'm happy we came out with the victory. All right? That was a uh, and those games happen in this league. You know, sometimes uh, you need your offense to go out there and, and pull you through. And then there's other games when you need your defense to go out there and pull you through. And um, and those are one of those games. So. Um, man, I'm happy to sit here at seven and two, uh, going into this next week against another uh, good opponent. Um, and man, they're really uh, they're really playing well on tape. I'm just telling you. Um, I wouldn't say their record really is a true measure of who this team is. I think they have some good pieces, um, and we're gonna have our, our work cut off for us. Had both those games this year, where the offenses need to pull you through, the defense need to pull you through. Yeah. In, in this one, you said the offense need to pull you through. Yeah. You guys started off really well defensively in that game. Then they put together five consecutive touchdown drives. Like, can you just explain what's going through your mind when that's happening? Like the, the frustration, the ability, trying to stay calm in that yeah. moment? Yeah, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is I knew this quarterback was good, but damn, he's, he's, he's really good. Um, <clears throat> and I think everybody in the league wants one. Everybody in the league looks for one. And that's no surprise to, to us. Uh, shouldn't be any surprise to you guys because that's something that we talked about before. And man, he got into a rhythm. And he got hot, and they have a uh, they have some pieces there as far as skill positions. And um, to try to take Keenan Allen out, try to take Eckler out, that's a tough duty. And it's the reason why they're number one of the top offense in this league. All right, so uh, man, you got to try to hold on as best you can. And the guys got to go out there, and they, they got to make plays too. So um, it's a combination of of everybody. And I'm always going to say that, you know, for me, the coaching staff, and the players, and um, man, it was one of those offenses that where they came out there and they they they'll test you. Well, you said yesterday that uh, you know the, the defense is highly motivated after last week to sort of prove yeah. who the real unit is. Maybe you can just speak to that a little bit, just the level of. Well, the players are always highly motivated. I would say that. Um, and listen, we know who we are. Um, man, last year we were the, the last ranked defense, and I think we we're top ten ranked defense this year. So. Um, that's a really, really huge improvement. So as far as knowing who we are, we know that. We know we have the capabilities to go out there and play really, really good ball. Um, there's no secret to why we ranked up there pretty high, and that's in third down, and that's in other categories too. So, man, we just got to go out there and continue to play. You know, that, that's just what it is. I think so many people get caught up in, I mean, this would happen against this game against a really good quarterback, and, I mean, it, all hell breaks loose. Well, you know it did. You know, guys, we're still a pretty damn good defense. We've played some good defense this year. Um, and, man, get that out your head from everything that you see and every, what you read. Just understand what we've done and what we're doing and focus on that. So you attribute that more to an anomaly performance? I mean, something that's not indicative. This is the NFL. Yeah. That's what that is. And it happens. I mean, no one thought Cleveland put 30-some points on Baltimore, but it did. And, again, this is not, like, Pee Wee football, fellas. <laughs> this is the NFL, so things happen. And man, you fight your ass off every week to make sure it doesn't. And our guys do a damn good job of that. Basic quarterback you're well aware of, Justin Fields this week. And I'm just yep. curious what you saw different from that offense before his injury and just kind of the challenge that he presents. Well, listen, there. we know what he brings to the table. I mean, he's one of those guys that, man, it, <laughs> if it's there, he's out. And Listen, you can have him corralled. You can, I mean, he's strong as, as I don't know what, and he can break tackle. So, um, man, we got to do a really good job of containing this quarterback because um, he gets in his mode and he wants to run it. He can cause some issues. And he's done it all through his career. Um, that's something that we got to do a good job of to make sure we contain this guy. What did you learn from last year? He had 297 yards, I think, rushing. Is yeah. That, what do you take from those two performances? Don't let him do that. <laughs> I mean, that's that simple, you know. Again, listen, we talk about it as much as we can. And listen, our guys, they fight their butts off to make sure he does. But this guy's an elite, elite athlete. Um, and listen, it doesn't matter who you are. The thing is that we have to do a good job of make sure we have population to the ball. All right, that's something that we got to do a really good job of. And our guys know that, and they try everything they can. And I got to continue to try to put guys in positions to be able to do that also. When, when scores get out of hand like this, a lot of times people look at um, the personnel. Yeah. And the guys you're missing, the Mosley, CJ, Houston, those guys, do you think you have enough personnel, talent, whatever to, to we play these football? We play football. 
<laughs> we play football. And it's not like you're going to go out and go get Deion Sanders right now. You know, that's just what it is. Listen, the guys that we have has put us in a position where we're a top 10 defense. So, listen, I don't, I don't even look into that. I think that's one of the stupidest things you could think about. So, listen, we have great guys. But our guys go out there and play hard. That's what they're going to do. What does uh, Bruce bring to the table still at 36? Stan talked about him. Stan, yeah. impressive workout Tuesdays. What do you think he can maybe add? Well, I mean, obviously he's been around for a long time. Now we know he has. He's a good pass rusher. So we're going to utilize that. We're going to utilize the brain. We're going to utilize the pass rush as much as we can. Things we just got to get him in shape and get him ready to go. He has an edge to him too. I mean, he brings this an attitude. Is that something you think that your your group could use a little bit more of? Is it's just well, that we have an edge too. I mean, you don't become a top run defense without an edge. So, um, listen, he brings an added edge, but. You know, to be a top run defense, you better have an edge. And that's what our guys have. Uh, the coach liked, uh, you know, coaching the guys this week on one hand, like you say, in hindsight, we still a top 10 defense, but we allowed 38 points. So what's your coaching style going into the week this week? Are you on them? Like I'm always on them. That's never going to change. All right. But, man, we keep going. This is, uh, t listen, that's a good quarterback that got hot. You know, the things that we got to do is make sure that we don't allow that to happen again. Um, and every week, that's our mode, you know, and, and me getting on them, and that's just, I'm a demanding coach, and that's, that's never going to change. So um, the one thing I do know, I'm realistic of not just being a player, but also being a coach and understand how these things happen. And I think that's one of the things the guys appreciate uh, more or less about my mentality is I get it, and I understand. Um, I mean, I wish we can go out there and be the, uh, the 85 Bears and just shut everybody down. But for some odd reason in people's head, they think that like really just continues to go on and doesn't. Um, I can recall when I was with the Jets, I think it was 2000, when we played the, the, uh, the Ravens. And shoot, we put 500 yards on the Ravens. Do you think those guys better die? No, they didn't. They kept on playing. And that's our mentality. Justin, the runner, but before he was hurt, they were really pushing the ball down the field. I think he had six touchdowns and 20 plus yards. What, what does DJ bring to that offense? And is that kind of part of the. Man, the yes, he has. Yes, he has. And listen, um, I've went against that player um, when I was in New Orleans, you know, and he was in Carolina. So I, I am well aware of what he brings to the table strong, fast, can break tackles. Uh, those are some of the things that people really don't realize about this player because he's built different from your typical receiver. So, um, and we've talked about that quite a bit. Like you just can't arm tackle this guy. All right, you have to uh, you have to wrap him up, uh, be strong, and again, population to the ball with that player too. So, um, the thing is, I've looked at is is how these guys are getting him the ball and the way that he's breaking tackles and making plays. And I, mean, I showed a clip of that to all our guys, and they are well aware of how this uh, this player plays. Football shape, how do you see Bruce Irvin factoring into the Say this one more time. Once he's in football shape, how do you see Bruce Irvin factoring into the, the pass rush? Um, you know what, we'll build different packages for him. Um, and we've been having him watch some of the edge uh, guys that we have and uh, how they're operating, and he'll be able to do that for us. Also in base, he operates the same linebacker for us. Chicago's run the ball more, really well this year. And kind of they always run the ball well. Whole host of characters with out Say it again. What stands out to you about it? What impresses you about it? Um, well, we know uh, Foreman, um, big, strong, physical back, uh, downhill runner. Um, Want to see if Herbert comes back. All right, 24. He's a what we, we call stretch to puncture type, where he does a really good job of setting up his blocks and putting his foot in the ground and getting downhill. Uh, and then obviously the quarterback makes a huge difference their run game also. So um, it's going to be a challenge for us, and we know that. We know what Foreman brings to the table. We know what Herbert brings to the table. We damn sure know what the quarterback brings to the table. So we just got to be good in those areas. With their emerging, with their emerging deep ball game, is it? Yeah. Is it like Baltimore? I mean, where they use uh, Justin's mobility to punish you deep because you you really put in conflict, I guess, with those guys. Well, the thing that they do a good job of that we have to do a good job of is winning our one on ones and man coverage. Um, and when you get a quarterback like that and then you surround him with the athletes that they have, um, it makes it really, really tough. And in every game, listen, somebody's going to have to have the tough hat, and we know that. And that's every play somebody has to have that. And when you have that tough hat, you have to win, and um, we expect our guys to do that. But you're right. He, he does bring that added element to where defensively, man, you're going to have to be in some man coverage. Curry's 
been able to get uh, his hands on the ball as of late. It's only a couple weeks he's not doing, I guess, quote, little boy stuff anymore. He's growing up. So how have you seen Hold him up, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's what he said. He said what? That he's growing up. He's not doing the little boy stuff anymore. What is the little boy stuff? I mean, you got <laughs> That's That's what he told me. He's like, really? I'm growing up. I'm here. This Interesting. is what I'm, I'm here to do. Get, <laughs> get interceptions. Well, he's here to do a lot more than that. You know, so that's just a part of his game that he's really good at. Um, and listen, sometimes those things take time and um, it just clicks. And that's, you know, you guys asked me that question, I think, a couple of weeks ago about why he hasn't gotten them. Now he's getting them. And now it's, it's how this game is. And, and usually when they happen like that, they do come in bunches. All right. And um, I'm hoping that his bunches is continuing um, as we go into this next, this next game. All right. Okay. How we doing? Great. Yeah, no, I'm uh, kind of straight ahead. Right, left. North, north, south. Oh, yeah. It's like our kickoff return. I'm going to kick us off with a long snapper question, if you don't yeah. mind. I'm just curious. Just the, uh, the, the, it's something I guess we take for granted. Uh, just a job you think should get done in football, but to, to have Jake come in and, and kind of stabilize that after losing Scott, how, how valuable was that and comforting was that for you? Yeah, huge. And I will say, I know I didn't get asked about it last week, but daily, um, he had done a tremendous job for us. I mean, his game had really improved a lot and was super happy with him and the direction he was going and all that stuff. So obviously losing him was devastating. Um, and then, uh, but to have McQuaid come in was, it was great for us. And I said it a couple times during the course of the week with coach before the game. And then obviously it ended up being big in the game, but like, man, there's just, it's very comforting to know that we got a veteran player who's been in big games. He's played a lot of plays and, uh, you're not teaching them how to protect and the protection and all that stuff and the snap. You're just teaching them like, Hey, this is what we do. And I thought that all those guys, the punt team guys, the field goal guys, um, obviously Fox on the hold and Riley on the kicks, but I thought all those guys collectively did a great job, not just on game day, obviously, we all saw that. But during the course of the week, really working hard to get up to speed and get on the same page. And they all did a, just did a great job of coming together during the week. And then obviously it paid off um, for those guys in the game. You have Benito Jones playing on the field goal protect unit, which I guess has been a few weeks now, but I didn't really notice till last week. Can you just share how that came about? And is that just like he's a big immovable man? I mean, that's kind of the... Yeah, it's close to pretty much just that. Uh, big, uh, not movable man. Uh, yeah, it really is a lot of that. Um, I think a lot of teams kind of have a, you know, there's some, a lot of teams have one guy who's on the defense, some teams two, um, but a guy on the defense who's filling in one of those spots there. And some of that is like Ragno doesn't play on that unit for us. You don't really want to put that long or the uh, short snapper center in that position necessarily. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, he's done a great job for us. He's, he's obviously big. He eats up a lot of space. And, and the best thing about him, which I really appreciate, because the truth is the field goal job description is not that glamorous right now. And it's basically stand up. you got to take it on the chin. These guys are teeing off on you. Some of them are rushing to try to block a kick. There's other guys that are just rushing to just make you pay a price for attempting a kick. And the field goals team is really to stand in there and take it. And so the one thing that I really appreciate with Benito is he does that, but he does it with a smile on his face and he's got an energy about it. And it's not like, oh man, why me? You know, I mean, he's embraced it. And I respect that because at the end of the day, obviously you need those plays and games come down to those plays and you got to operate or be able to handle those things efficiently. And he's done a great job for us. Is he actually kind of willing to take it? Like he went to you last year and was like, I can do this? I, can do this. Uh, I don't know if he went and volunteered, but he, uh, no, but when I said it, yeah, no, he actually kind of did say like, oh yeah, I'll do it. You know, and he's taking great pride and he plays on field goal and field goal block for us. So yeah, he's been great. There's one bit of a, de a, a debate. The Derwin James play there right at the end, was it from your looking at it, was it that a legal play? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like 
it's kind of in those situations in the game, I, I feel like it was fine. Um, you know, we talked about it. It's funny because I knew it was going to come up because we had talked about the jumper in here. And I was like, yeah, well, a lot of people can jump over the top, but it's jumping over the top, getting enough penetration, re-elevating in order to actually block the kick, which is what they couldn't do. Um, but it was a good effort. But the one thing that happens is you're kicking a game winner with the ball on the 21-yard line or whatever. It's kind of like what happened to Houston or Houston did a couple weeks ago. I mean, you're rolling the dice and guys trying to jump the count, come off the edge, and if he's offsides, move it up five and redo it, you know? Um, but if he times it up perfect and he blocks it, well, then great. Same thing going over the top. Like, if they call it leveraging because his hand pushes too much, well, then leveraging, rewind it, do it again. Um, if they don't call it leveraging and you block it, then you win the game or you tie the game and it goes into overtime. So it's like kind of a no-risk situation, I think, on the field goal block team. On the field goal team, it's like obviously you got to try to sit in there and execute and, and get the job done. Allowed, right? uh, so you're allowed to be within a yard of the line of scrimmage, or you have to be within a yard of the line of scrimmage. Uh, when you go over the top, you can't you can't land on anybody or use anybody to what they call leverage, which is to help you elevate over the top. And I would, I mean, there's that's like in my course of whatever 16 years in this league, like what's actually called is been different throughout the times that I've been in there. So I've seen times where they said, hey, the guy's foot brushed his back, so you can't, you're not allowed to touch anyone when you go over the top, it's a penalty. And then I've heard him come back five years later and say, well, he brushed, he just brushed his back. He didn't use it to leverage and he didn't really come down on him forcibly. And then they say, so it shouldn't be a penalty. Um, so it's just kind of where they're at, but I got no problem with the play. I thought those guys did a good job putting pressure on us. Um, I said a week ago that I thought our field goal protection could be better, um, and I put that on my shoulders. I thought those guys really did a great job throughout the course of the game. I don't think it's ever perfect um, or it's ever been perfect to my liking, um, but probably none, no plays have. Um, so anyway, but it, it was those guys did a great job. There's some things we could do better to help that play even more. Um, yeah, I'll give you a good story. So not that you guys like my stories. I know you're like, oh man, he's going to use up the whole five minutes. <laughs> you don't have any more questions anyway, right? So, um, yeah, so I grew up in a household. You guys know my dad was in the military and, uh, um, he was a pilot and he would always tell us when we were kids growing up, you know, a story of kind of like, what are your standards, you know? Um, and so the way he told the story was this, he said he was flying. He was uh, learning to become a pilot in the Navy, and he was out with a, an officer, and it was a training flight, and the, uh, he was in the front, the guy was in the back. And he said, the guy says, you know, uh, whatever, climb and maintain 3,000 feet. And he said, climb and maintain 3,000, sir. The guy said, uh, turn right heading 360. He said, all right, right heading 360, sir. The guy said, descend and maintain 2,000 feet. He said, descend and maintain 2,000, sir. And then uh, the guy said, I said, to send and maintain 2,000. He said, we're level at 2,000, sir. The guy said, you're 2,050 feet. He said, yes, sir. He said, he gets it down 50 feet. And the way he told the story, he's like, God, you're in this jet aircraft. It's very sensitive. You just push a little forward, a little back. It's going to jump 100 feet just like that. He said he got down, <clears throat> got out of the plane. The guy said, God. That was a hell of a flight, man. You did a great job. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. If you accept that 50 feet today, you'll accept it the rest of your life. And he said, ultimately, it's going to come down to what are your standards. Um, and so that was the story. So ultimately, for me, it's like, ah, no, the, you know, there's 50 feet everywhere in everything we do. Nothing's perfect. Um, but anyway, I think the guys have done a great job. They're playing hard. And, uh, we got a lot of room for improvement. We say that every week. But I think we're on the right track. James did clear the line there and he did elevate uh, yeah I love I love the I love the rush that they did I thought they did a good job executing it I got no problem with it the other way, he, he maybe gets a hand on it so what is what is the technique counter to yeah, I'm not going to get into all that for you but sorry <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I think it's hard to go over the top I think there's probably been like uh I mean uh, there's one that was blocked you guys pointed that out but there's probably been I don't know 10 plus um, where guys go over and they get close. There's a lot of ways to get close, but to get the job done is different. This is your, um, you know, service month and everything. Just <coughs> your, your father 
father? What does this mean to you, you know, to sort of? Well, I will say this. You bring that up. I mean, it's it's obviously humbling to be where we are today or in these shoes for me personally, for sure. I'm sure for all of us because ultimately we're in a great spot and there's a lot of people that we owe that to. Um, and I'll just tell you, you know, when we were in L.A., I'm about to say San Diego, but I grew up in San Diego with the Chargers. We're in L.A. and uh, at halftime, coming out of halftime, you know, they were doing a, a uh, recognizing some families, I think, who made the ultimate sacrifice in their family. And uh, just to see that, it's just humbling because there's a lot of people that put an awful lot on the line for us to be here today. And ultimately for us, we play a game, and I was thinking about that coming out of the half. Like, here I am, I'm, I'm down on this field, and, and you know, a brand new stadium that's beautiful. I'm playing against a team that I grew up watching or coaching against a team I grew up watching. Um, I'm coaching a game that I love and it's been great to me and my family. It's been really given us a lot. Um, but ultimately, I'm also sitting there watching these people who paid a real price. And uh, so I'm just incredibly grateful for all the uh, men and women who serve and all the different ways that they do for us. Um, and it's, it is very humbling for me um, to be here today because... I know I talk about Luke Combs, but it is like the song uh, Five Leaf Clover, I think it is, of his. And it's like, you know, I, I don't really deserve this. You know, there's a lot of people who deserve uh, a lot of great things, but I've been fortunate to be here. So if you're asking me about what that means to me, it's kind of, I mean, that hits home. Those people on the field? No, I didn't. I thought about it, and I just felt like, man, I mean, I really don't. Yeah, it's just humbling, but I, it's definitely touching for me, and I definitely appreciate all the men and women out there have made and families and you know made those sacrifices. Yeah. You want to tell me the the technique on how to put the jumpers? Well, so the bottom line is we got to play a little a little bit higher, and it, it's a fine line because you start playing too high, they start moving you out of there, and then all of a sudden they're getting penetration, they're getting their hands up, kind of like happened to. Uh, Baltimore against Cleveland last week and you know Tucker gets his kick block um, by just a guy pushing through and getting a hand up so there's a lot of ways to get it done um, ultimately Tucker's block was also kind of a low kick you know Riley hit a perfect kick and sometimes when you hit a low kick you're gonna block it and there's a lot of different rushes that would block it um, but anyway so our technique would be a little bit higher and that'll take care of that but you got a chance on this one. Uh, Khalees banged up uh, ankle. Who knows how that affects him going into the week. But if, if it is something that's concerning, what, what's the, the backup punt returner plans? Who are some of your options? There? Yeah, good question. And really it's um, probably applicable to right now because provided if Donovan Peoples-Jones were active, he would definitely be an option. And that's new for us. Um, but obviously he was doing that earlier this year, speaking of Cleveland, with Cleveland. And uh, so anyway, that would be an option. St. Brown's always uh, been a great option for us back there in multiple games. He's kind of been an emergency plan, a uh, great ball fielder for us. Um, so those would be two of them. Dorsey's got some experience. We've got a number of guys who could go back there, but that would, those would be kind of at the tops of the list. Before you go, too, because, you know, he made the game kick. I think Google just glossed over it. And, you know, for all the crap he's taken about, like, strength, whatever, he's – he yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things we've always said about a kicker, in order to be a really good kicker in this league, and I think, you know, he's on, on the journey um, to kind of write his story or his book, but um, ultimately for him and for all of us, you got to make big kicks, and he's really done that in his career. When the, the moments have been big towards the end of games and clutch situations, he's come through. He came through for us, and I do give him a lot of credit. Um, I think... You know, during the week, actually, last week, we put some pressure on him a little bit, um, to be honest with you, just, to, you know, performing. It's like when, when you're in our shoes or a coach's shoes, sometimes it's like being a parent probably, you know. Like sometimes the hardest thing to do is, like, you know, tell your son or your daughter something constructive, you know, and it's like, but that's also what they need to hear, and it helps make them better. And so we put some pressure on him last week during the week, and, ultimately stepped up and responded did a great job so happy for him and proud of him and uh yeah he was great all right appreciate it guys Take care. how are we doing great. good uh fun game to be a part of there there last week at uh 
those guys were playing so hard across the board, each position group, it, it made it made my job really easy. Felt like almost anything on that sheet was gonna was gonna work. So that's a that's really a credit to the to the guys. It's less the plays, it's more the style of play. Those guys played hard from play one all the way until the end. And uh, you know, we're able to put up some yards and some points, which was great. And we kind of talked last week that uh, some guys were going to be unhappy because we got so many mouths to feed. And unfortunately, we were able to feed quite a few of them. So um, good thing, good thing to happen. And uh, that's just one week out of the bye week. Hopefully we can continue that momentum. That's what, what good teams do is consistency. And so that's really our challenge here this week is to, uh, is to put similar formula out there and have the same results. But really good group that we're about to face. The, the Chicago Bears. I'm curious about some of your run formations you, you utilize. I mean, just a lot of really unique looks in that game with the staggered backfields and um, wide splits for the fullback or throwing Amon Ra back there. Like, what, what is maybe some of the inspiration for what you're trying to accomplish with these different looks in the run game? <laughs> uh, that's hard to say. I, I think we got a we got a lot of uh, really smart, creative coaches up on that second floor that come up with some good ideas. Um, young guys that have been in the college game that have seen some things that maybe you haven't seen in the NFL, and then uh, some guys that you know we talk about Scotty Montgomery, Steve Hyden that that weren't here with us last year that bring good ideas to the table each and every week. So it's a collaboration. I know Coach Campbell likes to get a little crazy as well, and and really when you have a head coach that's like that, it uh, it gives us the green light to to go ahead and push the limits a little bit. Just sticking with that, it felt like you utilized pitches more in this game than than handoffs. Um, I don't know if that was a, a game plan specific thing or you know, is, is there an effort there to get your, your weapons in space a little bit better with, with that utilization? Yeah, there's a number of reasons that uh, really don't want to divulge why, why we did that. But that was a comment Taylor Decker made early in the week. Like, he's like, man, it feels like we're tossing a lot of things this week. And yeah, um, but yeah, there, there, were, there were some reasons behind it. And uh, the, the technique that our guys blocked with combined with that help help to create some running lanes just the comfort level i know we talked about it last week too it seems like every week with just decker and Pinay and being able to leave them out there on an island sometimes just how advantageous is that for a play caller what does that allow you to do offensively anything <laughs> no really i mean we uh you kind of take it for granted a little bit you know i think a lot of teams have to mask their tackles or help their tackles at times. And, and our guys are not that way. They're, they're excellent in pass protection and then very multiple when it comes to our running game, what they're able to do, get on the perimeter, pool, things of that nature that, uh, that makes them very unique. And, and honestly, that's why our offense can be a little bit unique as, as well because of what they are able to do. Malcolm Rodriguez. Um, you guys are asking a lot of them playing defense, linebackers, special teams. Now the decision to play him at fullback. Just wondering what went into that decision to play him at fullback and how it's done. He, he when we when we uh, drafted him last year, we were in the OTAs and and I think it was Johnny Morton at the time was with us and he said, "Golly, that guy looks just like a fullback," you know, and so. We've kind of had our eyes on. We we mentioned something to coach back then, and uh, no, 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 he's a linebacker. He's a linebacker. But the injury to Cabinda, him being out, kind of opened the door a little bit to uh, to to kind of guide him down that road. And and he's done a great job so far. He's a he's a physical player, instinctive, smart, which makes the learning curve a lot better for us. And uh, you know, I think I think we've had some production when he's been out on the field. Time does he have to spend in offensive meetings versus defensive meetings? It's a mix. Um, we're fighting AG to to get him during walkthrough just now. So it's like one period he'll be with us, and then the remainder he's with them. So he's he's a dual threat in in that regard, and uh, looking forward to to seeing what he can continue to bring to the table. Yeah, I mean, he, he plays low. He comes out of his stance well, and uh, he is not afraid of contact, drives his feet on contact. So, some things are just completely natural to him. I think Baltimore was the first game that we had. We, we tried that with him, and uh, there, there are some things that um, you, you tell people to, to run your feet on contact, but you have to do it a few times to figure it out. That was not the case with him. 
the official game. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. It's it's in the it's in the docket though. <laughs> it's in the dialed up for yeah. No, I mean Chris Spielman. He's uh, you know, early in the week he's looking at some college prospects, and it's every week he'll give me these index cards. He's probably got 10 to 12 index cards every week of plays that just pop to him as he's watching college tape. So we've got, we've got a big library right now of, of good thoughts that, that we like to cycle through. And go back and watch those tapes that he gives you. Like the- oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's, it's good. It's good stuff. You were pretty excited on the uh, Khalif Raymond uh, play there. <laughs> Had a nice little sprint down, down the sideline there. Just the value of a guy like Khalif and maybe even Josh Reynolds. You talked about it. You have a lot of weapons and maybe some guys don't get the ball as much. But to have guys like that, maybe down to Peoples Jones into the mix now too, you know they're going to do the dirty work. They're always in the right spot. And then when you need a play, those guys always just kind of seem to step up. Just the comfort level of having guys like that as your number two, number three. I don't know if you view it that way, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the consistent players that know what to do and, and you know we're going to perform when their number's called. Um, Khalif's one of those guys. Josh Reynolds, absolutely. I mean, we saw Brock Wright come through with a big play with us uh, on Sunday as well. So we, those guys are scattered all across our, our roster here on offense. Shoot, we've got some on the practice squad that haven't had an opportunity yet that, that I know just by watching how they practice and what they do that if they get, get a chance to play on game day, they'll come through as well. So... Um, a lot of comfort there, and that's them working their tails off through the week. And then it's our coaches. They, they are as detailed and thorough in terms of teaching the game plan as I've been around. And so the combination of the two um, allows us to count on them when, when the time calls for. That's good. One day, it's good. Better, much better against the run this season than they were last year and just had Montez Sweat at the deadline. Just kind of what are you seeing out of that defense? This, this is a dangerous defense. The, these guys are – are very good. They have not been healthy um, until recently, and ski, it's it's almost like like they've taken off the training wheel scheme wise. Last year was very vanilla. This year is not the case. Um, they played on Thursday, so they've had some a little extra time to prepare. I, I have a feeling he's going to throw some stuff at us that we haven't seen on tape, which uh, which you know that'll be good with some in game adjustments for us to to deal with. But um, personnel wise, was upgraded significantly on all three levels. Um, the DBs are playing really well there. A lot of them are second year players that are, that are, uh, showing up or they got a rookie and they got, uh, Johnson. I mean, they got guys talent across the board here. So, um, we have to be very sound in what we do. I know, uh, I've had a lot of respect for, for this head coach. I remember when he was in Indy and I was in Miami and we played them and it might have been his first year there. And you could tell those guys were playing with technique and fundamentals. And uh, and it shows up again on this tape right now. So it's it's a good unit. They're talented and a tough scheme to to attack. I'm curious, what's your mentality like going into a week when you know it's going to be kind of a strength for strength matchup when you run game versus their run defense? Is it? Let's go prove that our strength is better, or let's maybe look elsewhere for for a different matchup that better fits us. I, I think uh, every week for us, we're always going to look for the best ways to run the football. Um, that doesn't change. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know that we'll necessarily lean one way or the other. It's kind of the feel of the game once we get into it. But during the course of the week, we come up, hey, we feel like this is the best way to attack them in the run game. This is our compliments off of it in the passing game. And it, it uh, marries together here towards the end of the week. I probably have not fully formed that vision in my mind yet until I see it on practice. And I want to ask you about Jameson. Um, you know, you've said in the past just how important time on task is for him, alignment assignment. Whatnot. It seems like um, you know, between the blocking, uh, between maybe a little bit more uh, targets and, and snap counts that, that he's growing that, that trust with you. So um, how are you seeing his development, uh, even though maybe the, the pass game production isn't quite there yet? He's doing a phenomenal job. Um, really, since he's come back, it's meetings. He's attentive. He asks good questions, walkthroughs. He's, he's on his stuff. And then in practice, he's practicing really hard. Um, we're, we're still working to get on the same page in some ways in the passing game, but we see improvement each every day, each and every week so far. And, uh, you know, I think the more reps he continues to get in games is only going to accelerate his progress. I also wanted to ask about the, the fourth and five that you decided to run the draw play on. Was that something that was checked to at the line? Was that something that was designed? And I guess that's incredibly rare to run in that situation, so I'm just kind of curious in the thought process there. Did you like the call? I looked at it for 
We like the results, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's trusting our players to get the job done. David Montgomery, um, I think he, you know, he's a little bit short of the sticks, but he kept churning his legs and you saw the rest of the unit join the party as well. Um, so we, we were willing to run it whenever we, we want to, you know, that's how we feel. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can only imagine. It's good. Yeah. Thanks guys.